Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video and yes, I took a really really long trip in a variety of universities, but finally I am back in studio and that means tons of videos are about to come. Let's get started for this video and in this video I'll answer the most asked question in all of the all universities that I've visited is what laptop should I buy for programming? So in this video, I'm gonna just recommend two of them. Yes, no, five or 10, just two of them. And I'll tell you the reasons and the pros and cons of both of them. And yes, of course, this video is not sponsored by anyone. These are my personal opinions and I'll back my opinions by uh, proper points and pros and cons. So let's get started. So if you're watching this video, it is pretty clear that you want to buy a new laptop in 2019 for programming purposes. And let's first address what kind of programming you will be doing in future. First and foremost, the web developers. Now, for the web development, any machine that is like i3 processor and with four gigs of RAM is absolutely fine. And it doesn't matter if you're using high-end libraries and framework, whether that's Laravel, Django, Ruby on Rails, uh, probably React, Angular, Vue.js, or anything at all. Just firing up your Sublime Text and VS Code is going to be something which is less memory consumptionable and uh, let's uh, kind of it doesn't require much of the processing power. That's why if your goal is just for web development, you can really get out with a low-budget laptop that's have a 8 gigs of RAM or probably 4 gigs of RAM decent processor. Just i3 is absolutely good. But I believe that you want to explore a little bit more things. You want to explore Android development as well. And surely the latest buzzword in the market, the machine learning, AI, deep learning, all of these things. Now, a lot of these things you first need to understand that if you're going for Android development, it's an intense kind of a work and it requires a variety of resources. If you want to explore the iOS development side as well, then Apple is the only option that we have around. In case you want to go for machine learning, again, you don't require heavy end stuff because the basic trainings of all these models that you're preparing for machine learning can easily be done in low uh, configuration of computer as long as you are just playing around with the stuff. The moment you start that I am gonna train my model onto very intense and my data files are big, there is no computer that can do it right now. You always have to move into cloud side. Google Cloud is one of the best options. We do have Amazon as well. So if we are moving onto the cloud, we definitely require just a browser and nothing else. So definitely a decent laptop can work out with that. Now, yes, I know I promised you that I won't be going into details of that, but these are most important things that you should be aware of because you're about to become a programmer, you're about to start your journey, and these are the things that you should know before purchasing a laptop. So now let me start, let get started about uh, the laptop that I would recommend you. My first recommendation is going to be MacBook Air. Yes, I know I have previously made a video and said that MacBook Air is a decent laptop, but it sometimes lags. But recently I saw the Apple event which held yesterday or day before yesterday, and I now can honestly recommend this MacBook Air as an entry level device, which is going to be more than enough for your web development needs, for your Android development needs, for your iOS development needs, and for basic machine learning development needs as well. It is really, there was just a small lag that our students have faced in the offline boot camps and all the students I have talked in universities. And I think with this small boost in performance and the upgradation in RAM, uh, I think it's now one of the perfect choice for the students who are about to enter in universities or looking forward to get started in programming. One of the advantages of MacBook Air is, of course, it's lightweight. They have updated the screen as well, so it's not the really ugly screen that that is supposed not to be there in the in the Apple devices. So it's now come it now comes up with a better display, lightweight surely, and the best part is you can do all of your web development on it. Android development is gonna be absolutely smooth in it, and yes, I know it's gonna be much more smoother as compared to some of the other uh, equal amount that you're gonna be spending in Windows laptop. The performance and the optimization is so amazing in Macs. And yes, no, I know it sounds like I'm a big, huge Mac fan or Apple fanboy. It's not, it's not, it's not like that. I'm just totally uh, mentioning the point which I think are important and useful. So yes, you can do your web development, you can do your Android development, and of course, the exclusive, you can do your iOS development as well. And surely for all your Python stuff, your R stuff, your machine learning, TensorFlow, Keras, uh, PyTorch, this all can be done easily in the MacBook Air, of course. If you have a little bit more budget, you want to go for MacBook Pro, that's always an amazing decision. But I think as a student, budget-friendly option, 
I strongly recommend that MacBook Air can be the device that you can go for. Absolute beast. Now let's come on to the con side of the MacBook Air. It's not the perfect device. I know they are charging a lot more for the device specs they are providing. It's not very high-end spec device, but let me tell you honestly that yes, it is not very high-end spec device. It's just an entry-level machine, but the optimization is something that you should care an extra for. Mac, Apple builds their own hardwares and their own softwares. Of course, they don't build it everything in house. Everything is exported and all that. Let's not go into that. But definitely these guys know how to optimize hardware and software properly so that even if they don't have high end of the specs, like probably not 16 gigs of RAM, still they produce really good uh, optimized results. Whether you are running Android Studio or iOS X code or probably any other editor that you are looking up for, they produce it really good. The only downside that is pretty big for a student is there is no gaming option. When it comes to the gaming, Apple sucks brutally and the game that they provide in their store are just mere basics and nobody would like to play them. You are pretty aware that uh, it's going to be a proper development machine for programming. It's not going to be something where you will be able to play games. For all other things, movies, Netflix, Amazon Prime, it's, it's all good there. It's all in just browser. Uh, but as far as the gaming experience, it's it's not going to be heavy optimized or something. In case you use softwares like uh, Adobe Premiere or Photoshop heavy end, definitely MacBook Air is not something which you should be looking up for because something like Adobe Premiere doesn't perform even nearly good in this MacBook machine. So for programming purposes, it's absolutely based. But for rest of the other like uh, gaming, uh, from Adobe Premiere, it sucks. Okay, I do understand that some of you don't like Apple at all, even though they, uh, they can be a good suit for your need. But let's just say, let's be honest, some people don't like Apple and they don't want to go into the Apple side of things. They want to go for high spec hardware and Windows and that's totally okay. It's not like something can be done in Apple and cannot be done in Windows apart from iOS development. Everything is almost same now and you can do all of your development stuff on Windows machine and can enjoy your gaming experience as well. There is nothing wrong in it. And I would be suggesting just one laptop for this, which is Asus TUF, T-U-F. Now, I'm not suggesting this laptop as a random search. Some of our students at our offline bootcamp actually bought this laptop and we have tested its performance over a lot of weeks. And we are totally happy with the performance that it's producing. And of course, uh, there are pros and cons for both of it, but I would say the specs are pretty promising. You would be enjoying your gaming experience. You would be enjoying your Android development process. You will be enjoying all of your web development process, all the basic languages, C, C++, Python, Ruby, whatever you're looking for, it's absolutely based. You won't be pro finding any problem with that. Of course, the device doesn't heat up, which is usually my issue with the devices. Device should not heat up much. It doesn't heat up much. Uh, the cooling performance is pretty awesome. And I surely can recommend on the Windows side this laptop. And yes, of course, it's a very high-end specs laptop. You won't be needing to upgrade it for, I don't think so, for the next like three or four years. It can just work fine, absolutely fine there. So the pros of this Asus uh, TUF Tough laptop is pretty good. We are pretty happy with that, no problem at all. And yes, it performs really good, but there are two cons that I would straightforward like to mention that. First and foremost, the screen is not the best in the world. And I don't think so that's gonna be a big issue because previously a MacBook Air doesn't have that much kind of a good display. Compared to that, it's pretty awesome. Uh, so yes, make sure that you are you expect not a heavy end display. It's just decent for a gaming laptop. It could have been better, but I'm not complaining here. What the pricing they are they are giving this laptop? I think it's absolutely a buy deal, and I would highly recommend this laptop. Another downside as compared to programming perspective is that on this hardware you cannot do your iOS development. Surely we have other options like Flutter, React Native. There are tons of options through which we can do uh, our development. We can write all of our code, but definitely we cannot run that on iOS simulators, iPhones and all of that. So if your plan is never to go into iOS development, then forget about Apple. And I think this is going to be the machine that you are looking up for. So here are my two recommendation along backed with all the stories, pros and cons and what you can do and what you cannot do with these laptops. MacBook Air, the latest one released in the end of 2018, probably be available in 2019 for sure. That's my number one recommendation that please go for it. I know it's expensive, but it's totally worth it. Another one is Asus stuff, which is pretty amazing in case you have a little bit uh, gaming warm inside you that yeah, I want to play a game. That's nothing wrong with that. Go ahead and go for this Asus stuff. 
So I could have recommended tons of five or 10 laptops, but I think these two makes absolute clarity that what you're gonna be needing for an investment uh, for like the next four years or five years. They are, these are pretty rock solid machines. Now coming on to the point, hey, these are both pretty expensive machine, more than like 50, 55K. I surely could have recommended you a little bit lower than that, like probably under like 35K or 40K, surely. Sometimes budget is an issue. I totally understand that as a student, you don't have high-end budgets, but I think these machines are worth investment because instead of buying a laptop every next year, just invest in once and save for a longer time. And surely if you'll be cutting down the expenses, you'll be cutting down on hardware, probably a less RAM, probably less graphic card, probably lower processor, probably no SSDs. Surely each of these things matters as the time progresses, your device becomes slow. So definitely I would say, hey, get some time, even uh, try to collect more money and go for these devices. I'm not getting anything from these devices. I'm not associated with these companies, but these are my personal recommendation that instead of making small investment every next year, go ahead, go for big one. Get one-time investment and make sure that you are happy with that for the next four years or probably five years. This is my personal recommendation. So again, link of these laptops are in the description section uh, for the Amazon. Of course, you know, on the YouTube, we always provide affiliate links. It doesn't increase your pricing. It helps our channel to sustain and to grow as well. So that's it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed this video. And yes, I'm finally back in studio. That means we are gonna be rolling down a lot of videos and I have canceled a lot of my university tours as well because I want to stay in the studio and make tons of videos. So that's why I am going to be staying in the studio for the rest of this year, 2018. So let's get started and I hope you are enjoying videos at this channel. If you are enjoying, why are you not hitting that like button? Go ahead, I surely deserve that. So make sure you hit that subscribe button as well and let's catch up in the next video. Just me.